Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. Um, this will be a, a brief, relatively brief update uh, to the broad markets. Uh, waited till we uh, opened for trading today. Wanted to see how things settled out the first half hour of trading. Uh, lately, the trend has been gap down. You know, most of the big moves down, or the moves down, I should say. That the trend has been um, mostly upwards up until recently. And there's been a trend of uh, overnight losses in the futures, followed by uh, the, the gaps down getting bought up at the open and ramped up. Uh, today, so far, a little bit different. We started to see that pop early morning, and uh, and they faded it, and we're back down close to uh, where we opened down at the lows. So let's just dive into the charts. I'll update these, and, and we'll go from there. Like I said, not not any huge developments uh, to mention since the last update, but uh, I want to go over the charts of uh, uh, the QQQ, SPY, as well as IWM and MDY to give you a really comprehensive view of the stock market, small, mid, and large cap. All right, so we're going to start here with the futures. I'm on this chart, NQ. Uh, again, been covering this chart in detail recently. Story here was we had this uh, uh, breakdown right there below the trend line, back test yesterday, and we're moving lower. So this is how you know one would expect that to happen. You break down below a well-defined uptrend line with negative divergence, uh, negative divergences confirmed at the high. Uh, and you either start selling off from there or uh, it's not unusual to see a kickback rally to back test and there it is. So uh, nothing's changed as far as where my target is. Uh, I'm still expecting this 70-44-ish level uh, is my minimum downside target and the Possibly, we'll see what happens from there. Uh, there are certainly some developments in the daily chart that uh, could indicate a lot more downside than just a little mild pullback here. So if, if things really get going here, we're looking at the next target around 6880, uh, roughly 6879 for UNQ traders. Let's look at ES real quick, and then we'll get on to the uh, tracking ETF, SPY, QQQ, and those guys. Uh, this is ES, 60-minute chart. So now my first target's been hit. <clears throat> So I, I continue to maintain, I think the uh, QQQ or the NQs uh, have a game of catch up to play. I think they will lead to the downside uh, in the in the coming, or at least this week. That's what I my expectation was for that correction to happen this week. We'll see if it extends beyond there. And I do think we'll see the uh, Qs, and they're already outperforming today uh, to the downside. Uh, so I think that's a trend that will continue. So there it is again. ES is at support. We kind of overshot support briefly this morning, uh, the target, and uh, bounced back above it. And uh, that's where we're trading right now. So we have to watch that level. So that's that's it in a nutshell. ES, the S&P 500 E-minis, are at support after hitting that first target. But uh, I don't really have any significant support here on QQQ. So I favor more downside and a break of that level on ES and a move down here at about 27.08. And that will most likely coincide with that first target I just gave you on NQ. That would be my expectation. Okay, jumping over to the uh, SPY 60-minute chart. This is SPY, the S&P 500 tracking ETF, and now we have gapped uh, below. Uh, so that's uh, about as impulsive as you get. You know, when you break trend line support, you either have an impulsive red candle down through it or a gap. Uh, so although you don't see a lot of red there, imagine a big red if this were futures, which we just saw a minute ago, by the way. On the futures, it was an impulsive move down in the futures, uh, and that uh, put us below trend here, this uh, trend line. So that's the next sell signal I was looking for. But again, uh, just like ES, uh, we're at support now. So we've taken out the trend line, but uh, you can see a lot of reactions here. On the, that's, uh, that's what I call a support zone. I have two lines in close proximity. Uh, so you know, wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't surprise me to see SPY sort of hold up relatively uh, well right here, at least for a little while today, um, before moving lower. And um, you can see there that the uh, PPO uh, looked like it was poised to make a bullish cross. This is uh, this is bear fodder right here for you. Uh, when you see these bullish crossovers, uh, a lot of people use these, and they do typically work as good buy and sell signals. But um, uh, sometimes when the lines attempt to cross, meaning the PPO line crossing down above or below the signal line, the 9 EMA, you get a rejection. In other words, that signal line can sometimes act as support. So, uh, you know, this was a buy signal there, a bullish crossover. 
and then we had a failed bearish cross over the lines bounced and uh, here we had a f failed bullish crossover so just something to note right there and uh, that's why I don't think this dip is worth buying at this point in time I think there's more downside to come um, we'll just have to see if that trend line gets retaken uh, you know that would give a little little concern for pause a little pause for concern right there but also um, Remember, we took out this 277.92 level uh, yesterday, and uh, and that actually is a pretty significant uh, resistance right now on SPY. So if we happen to get above here, you have a couple levels to watch. Number one is the gap. This is yesterday's close, this green candle right there. So if I put a horizontal line here, about 20, 276.19, 276.20, somewhere around there, uh, that's gap resistance. So that's resistance number one. And then, of course, this is a big gap as well here. Uh, um, and actually, the top of the gap is right there, but that's where I had that line drawn. So those, those are levels to watch on a kickback rally on SPY if you're a SPY trader. But again, I think there's more more meat on the bone if you're uh, looking to short. And, and I would not be buying a dip right here in QQQ, at least not yet. Anything's possible. I'll always say that. But uh, we've taken out. This is playing out so far so well. Breakdown number one below this rising wedge pattern right here. Uh, we we went down yesterday, as I said, kissed that trend line, the uptrend line, the, what I call the primary uptrend line on the 60-minute uh, chart, and then gapped down below it today. And we ran back. We had that little pop in the morning. Here, let me show it to you here. Uh, this is a one-minute chart. So this is this has been the trend. This is what I was talking about recently. Uh, a lot of days I've seen this recently, where we gap down overnight uh, from an overnight move down in the futures, and they buy it up. Um, that's been the trend as of late. Now today I'm seeing a change of character. They started to the dip buyers. You know, it's like Pavlov's dogs are going to come in their condition to buy the dip. Uh, they bought it here, but now something's different. They're saying uh, this is what we call a rut row moment uh, for you Scooby-Doo fans, um, where they bought the dip, but now they're back underwater. We've actually undercut this morning's lows. So that's a little bit different. Let's see what happens. I know this is only one minute chart. And, uh, uh, but again, this is, you have to think like this for the day traders, whether it's uh, individual people, whether it's the computer algos that stepped in to bought the dip, like they've been, uh, been, buying recently uh this is something a little bit different here so we go much lower they're going to have to stop out and that will also embolden the shorts but again more so i'm focused on the longer term charts i'm just showing you a little bit of change of character so far and again early in the day you know try, try not to read too much into you know what happens over a 30 minute period but uh, uh, as we said, or as I said here, with that first target has now been hit, 174.14. And you can see it was resist or support, and support is support until and less broken. So we've had two 60-minute candles on there. And that's what you want to see uh, if you're short or looking to add to a short or initiate a short. You want to see 174.14 go with conviction. What I mean by conviction, well, not just an intraday or intracandle pierce. You see we went slightly below it there. But uh, as I often say, the initial tag of support from above, when I say initial, I mean it's the first tag in a while. It wouldn't be support if we didn't have reactions back here. Uh, but this is the last time we visited that area. So this is the initial tag, and this is our reaction. Now, I define a reaction as either a pause you know, pause slash consolidation or uh, a bounce. Uh, you can get either one. Um, so far, we haven't had much of a bounce at all. We did bounce this morning right when we hit it, bounce back up. I showed you on the one minute chart. That's the top of that candle right there and then move back down. That's not that's not good so far. Uh, I don't even think so. That's pretty much the back test, if you will, of the trend line. Um, but let's see what happens again. Got to take this 174.14 level out, and that opens the door up to my second target zone right here. And then uh, I think, you know, there's probably a good shot this third target right here gets hit as well. All right, let's wrap this up with just the small caps and the mid caps. Um, before I do that, I, you know, I... I I don't want to lose track of the bigger picture. I've been living in that world of 60-minute charts. We've had a low, a low volatility, a steady grind up in the markets for the last couple months now. And so, therefore, I don't focus a lot on the daily and the weekly charts because you're not getting a lot of developments. However, here's that trend line as well. Here's a trend line on the Q's 60-minute. Same one I, I showed you on the 60-minute, I mean. I'm sorry. This is a daily chart right here. And you can see here we had a divergent high. Uh, barely by the skin of our teeth, but there it is. There's your negative divergence. And uh, looks like we now have a 
bearish cross on the PPO. So any more downside is going to firm that crossover, uh, that bearish crossover. And as I often say, this is one of my favorite trend indicators, and I don't care what time frame you're working on. It works well on a 60-minute, works well on the daily time frame here. And I'm talking about bullish and bearish crossovers on the PPO. Um, those are one of my favorites. Also, whether the PPO is above or below zero. And right now, the PPO signal line is well above the zero line. But let's look at these crossovers. That's what the little arrows I have here. So we had a bearish crossover here. We had this big drop uh, in February. We had a bearish crossover right here. And you can see we had that big drop. And uh, as you can see, we had a bullish crossover right there. And the PPO line has remained above the signal line since then, telling you the trend was, uh, at least by that indicator, um, that the trend was bullish. But right now, uh, again, I'd like to see a little more downside to firm that up. I think we're going to get it. And that gives us two things. It confirms this divergence, this white line above, that long-standing divergence, um, confirms that divergent high because now we will have, again, assuming we get this crossover, we'll have a lower low on the PPO uh, as well as the RSI with prices above making a higher high. That's negative divergence. So there's a lot in this chart. And again, <coughs> back out the divergence and just by itself, you have the first bearish crossover uh, since going all the way back to what is that March 19th. So uh, there it is. A uh, lot, lot to be, lot to, lot that stands out to me on this QQQ 60 minute chart. And I know this one's busy. I might have a cleaner board somewhere else. So I'll try to Pull that up maybe later put a chart up on the site um, but there it is there's the divergence on the rsi as well okay so i didn't want to get off topic but it's really not off topic because i think these daily charts are important to uh, keep and keep an eye on them and there's a uh, spy you can see we had a little whipsaw signal on the ppo there you know nothing's 100 percent, but we didn't have it on on qqq and as you guys heard me say 100 times over probably you know if i'm trading the broad markets or even just taking in it for my analysis, whether I'm trading other things. Uh, I will not take a buy or sell signal on the SPY or QQQ if the other doesn't confirm, because these are your large caps indices. Q is a little more tech heavy, but uh, what you want to see is both of those confirm a buy or sell signal, and that sharply increases the odds it will play out. In other words, it helps minimize the odds of whipsaw signals. Uh, so there it is. We have a pretty clean crossover now. Uh, so these were whipsaws, but we didn't have, I just showed you on QQQ, we didn't have confirming signals on QQQ. So there it is. We're about to have uh, one of the, uh, you know, the first decent sell signals, at least by the PPO in a long time. And uh, on the SPY, let's go down to, we already did the 60 minute chart, so let's get away from there. Just wanted to point that out. And we'll wrap up, like I told you, with uh, mid caps. Just go down the go down the line here. Uh, what I see on MDY, well, we had, uh, you know, divergent high back here, there was a correction. We had a divergent high right here. There was a sharp correction once that trend line broke. Uh, we have a divergent high right here uh, waiting to be confirmed. I need to extend that divergence line out. Um, and we need to look at the, there it is on the on the uh, PPO where we've just made a bearish crossover. Uh, you can see that. And we still have the divergence down on the RSI. So that's MDY. And you can see there's some support there around 348.83. And it comes it comes in with a trend line resistance. So here's my my best guesstimate for MDY for you mid cap traders. And some come down there, have a reaction, and probably go on and break it. But let's just see for now. What is that? We're talking. It's not a huge move. It's roughly three three percent. Um, but it's probably not one you want to ride out if you're long. Uh, I'd be giving back some profits if you're an MDY or other mid cap stocks that are that move well with that index um, and then finally the small caps divergent high divergent high um, same old story you can see all the corrections in the past divergent high correction divergent high correction divergent high correction divergent high correction i mean just watch rinse repeat stuff uh, there it is uptrend line uptrend lines broken not seeing impulsive selling yet now my guess is uh that uh, this one plays a game of catch-up. I think we'll see uh, IWM 
catch up to the downside. It's gotten way ahead of itself. Small caps are pretty volatile compared to the large caps normally. Uh, they tend to go up more when they ra rally and they tend to fall more when they correct. So uh, be extremely unusual to see MDY that I just showed you about a 3% drop, uh, QQQ, whatever that percentage was, to see those play out and not see the small caps come down. So I'll just tell you real quick. There's my target right there. You can see trend line support. This chart's similar to MDY. Uh, 160, 19 ish, we have intersecting horizontal support and trend line support. So that's it if you want to swing trade the small caps or maybe juice it up with some TZA or um, uh, small cap futures, whatever you want to trade. Uh, there's a drop of about well, about 4% because the small caps really got ahead of themselves. So uh, again, not playing out for an impulsive reversal yet, but if we really zoom in there, let's look at this one on a 60 minute chart. Here it is, here's some, some trend lines to watch. Let me move this down a little bit. There's what we need to watch right here. This seems to be com uh, containing the recent uh, move up. Uh, so that would be the level to watch and if that breaks, you can see probably come down here, hit support, and then move on down here. And this this level is at 158.34. All right, let's wrap it up here. It's a 15-minute video. And remember, you guys, when you watch these videos, hit the uh, go to the settings. You can increase the playback speed if you want. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Best of luck on your trades.